I always wanted to be a farmer, right? Mm -hmm. Always. But I didn't have the confidence. I just didn't because um, it wasn't something I saw growing up. I didn't see, you know, nobody said, uh, when I grow up, I want to be a farmer. Right. Like as a real, real deal. Like, are you serious? That's what, you know, we're, we're paying school fees for this. And uh, I kind of just kept it inside. And um, it was just there. I just wanted to do it. But I just said, how, how could I be a farmer? You know, you're going, you're privileged enough to go to, a, you know, a really good school. There are expectations of you. You're studying in America. You know, there are even bigger expectations. Like, you know, um, but, and uh, I wasn't really scared of many things. Like, I, I was always the person that was on the soccer team. Mm -hmm. I played track. I did that. You know, um, I, I, one of my first jobs was, um, you know, in school, was working on, in the middle of Wall Street, you know? Oh, wow. Like, at, on Wall Street, at Bear Stearns, in fixed income, where you don't, you hardly see any women. Like, there aren't, like, lunchtime. If you're coming up the stairs and coming down the stairs, it's just a swarm of men. Yeah. And you would think, like, somebody like that, wouldn't you be fearless? Yeah. Like, you can't, you're in the middle of Wall Street with all these big shots mm -hmm. and in the middle of the fixed, you know, the, the desks are open spaces. Mm -hmm. And all I, all I would talk about was farming. I'm like, you guys think you're risk takers? Right. The biggest risk takers are farmers. They're like, come on, AJ. And, um, and you know, I, I, I didn't. I, uh, I would tell my friends in, in uni about it. They're like, look. Go ahead, go, go to Scotland, the Scottish Agricultural College, go there and study. And I said, nah, but it was always there. And um, I applied myself in everything I did, but that was always there. And, um, you know, I think what really was the catalyst also was in sense that um, I kept wanting to wait for the perfect time. Mm -hmm. You know, you keep saying, I want to do this. I wait for the perfect time. And um, it, there never was. You know, um, when I lost my husband, I think that's when you realize that, uh, okay, this is life right. and nothing is given. And um, I said to myself, okay, at this moment, it's either I, I, I live uh, with, with, you know, I live for, 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 for what it is that I truly want to do mm -hmm. and, and work at that. And uh, also to say, okay, now I'm the head of household and how to support myself, support my children, okay. what would make sense, you know, uh, and, and wanting to be home? What would make sense to do here? Um, and this is something that I see as, a, as an investment that makes sense at the end of the day. Once you invest in, in some of the things that seem expensive at first, you, it's only one time. Yeah. So imagine the same space. Mm -hmm. Once this papaya grows, I take it out, put something else in it and grow again. Yeah. And it's still yours. But, um, you know, farming is that thing that um, I think in many ways, it's something that goes with anything. Yeah. You know, diehard civil servant, you want to serve your country. My mother is a nurse, graduated from um, Amitich. Mm. Yeah, and uh, also loves farming. It's that thing that goes with everything you want to do. And, um, but it's also, it's, it doesn't have two ways about it. You know, you either are really into it in a way, mm -hmm. it's, it's rooted in passion, or, or not. Mm -hmm. um, but there's something that, no, something that nobody, nobody told me. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't about finally becoming a farmer mm -hmm. um, or about the business side. Right. There's something that I didn't realize how difficult it was, um, which is the decision as a farmer, you have to work the soil. Mm -hmm. But there's something on the soil that you found. There was something growing there. Um, there are trees. There were other, other trees already here. And uh, one of the most difficult things I faced so far is having to make the decision that I'm a farmer. Yes, I'm growing. I'm going to take care of the soil and be responsible and grow food, goodness, and then give to people, right? right. But then the other decision is that you have to okay. take something out. There's some species of trees now, mm -hmm. we don't have it anymore, right. like the santang. Yeah. Yep. These things, we don't have them anymore. I mean, the country is changing, we're changing, you know, um, there's urban development and it comes with its own, it's necessary, but it comes with its own, own disadvantages. Right. And what I've tried to do is that I found there's, there's some species of trees here, mm -hmm. that's it, yep. you know, like the santang. So I go out of my way that I'm not going to cut this down. You know, we have a mampata, 
We have several really? mampatas. Yeah. We have several yeah. mampatas that are just, I mean, these things, are, we also have other trees have medicinal purposes. Right. You know, there's um, one day I came here and uh, I walked across and there was somebody there, an old man. I was like, hi. And he's like, I was like, assalamu alaikum. He's like, wa alaikum assalam. I said, how are you? He's like, okay. And I said to him, uh, okay, what's going on? He said he's, he's been coming here for decades to this area, this specific what I fence, mm -hmm. to look for um, certain medicinal roots that treat arthritis, treat gout, treat diabetes, treat all these things. Oh, wow. And uh, then he started showing us all the different things he was collecting. And he's all the way in, um, he's in Serakunda, where he has his, 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 his uh, stall. Mm -hmm. But he comes all the way here. I said, why do you come here? He said, because what you have here, I can no longer find them. You know, because we've taken so many areas for now real estate development, right. they completely raise stuff. Oh. So, and I think that's very much part of who we are. But it's also now, I mean, for the most part, I think there's so much to be said in, in medicinal, homeopathic yeah. medicine. It, yeah. it really makes sense. Like we already have it. So um, I really try to take care. I'm going to keep some yeah, things. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not. Right. And it's funny, <laughs> but this was the most difficult thing um, mm -hmm. about it. People say, they always ask me, mm -hmm. hey, what are you growing on your farm? And I always look at them like, like this emoji <laughs> face. Because I always tell them, it doesn't matter really what you're growing. Mm -hmm. Because wholeheartedly, we're so beyond lucky um, here in the Gambia. Our, our, our soil is just of, of amazing quality for the most part. And we have water. Yeah. It's not like you're digging forever and, and ever. Yeah. No, you don't. Exactly. And you have great water, you know? It's not salty, it's, not, it, it's unbelievable. Right. And uh, that's why I never bother about what I'm gonna grow. The okay. other thing is that we don't supply for the market. Okay. We don't have enough supply for the market. <laughs> okay. So that's also why I say that, you know, you're telling me what are you gonna grow? I'm like, if you, I'm growing onions right, right. now. You know, we we're going to put in onions. This is okra that you just passed. Yeah, right. We had our bed of tomatoes. We have courgettes. We have uh, oh, wow. cucumbers coming up. You know, we have peppers, sweet green peppers will, are being transplanted. And the salads, we'll see that later. Right. Okay. Uh, the, the nursery salad. Nice. You literally look at the size of these onions. They I mean, yeah. but you know, you, wait, you, looked at, you saw the onion, but there's something else you didn't notice about it. The leaves. Yep. These are absolutely delicious. So um, what we do is that we take this uh -huh. and we solo dry it and then you use it as a spice, as an added seasoning. So what we focus here on Grow Our Africa, we focus on spices for our processing and added value. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, that's, you know, uh, if not, that's how we also deal with wastage. Right. It doesn't really make sense. Exactly. Same thing with the okra, turning it into a powder, you know, um, just like that with an implement, right? Mm -hmm. Literally, it, it would do all the weeding. So I change the heads. I can do weeding, tilling the soil, spraying. I can do cutting. And that's it. So we're not talking about like super fancy, crazy things that are, that are difficult to maintain. Right. You know how long this has been available in the market? For decades. What do your kids think about you being a farmer? <laughs> They're absolutely proud of it. I mean, um, you know, it's uh, to say to their to their friends like this is from our farm. Like you know, that's that's just they have something to show. Mm -hmm. Like this is from our farm, and uh, and they're out here, and they absolutely love it. When I saw them out here, and I see just how they feel about the place. Mm -hmm. The other one, she's three years old, but she just loves it. She's got stuff mm -hmm. to do. And the 12-year-old, like, she gets it. And I'm like, okay, we're doing the tomatoes together. And I'm not forcing it on them. Right. Um, but it's fun. It's interesting. And I can see that they're proud, you know, to talk to their friends about it. Their friends want to come here. You know, uh, I was like, okay, summer camp, sure. you can have it here. Yeah. But uh, if anything, I don't need my children to be farmers. Right. And uh, that's my mother. She's, okay. she's, she's, she is my role model because my mother has been that uh, a businesswoman for so long and mm -hmm. she's been willing to go beyond the extra mile to get it done you know to to make sure our school fees were being paid i went to private school can you imagine that make sure our school fees were being paid mm -hmm. and um never giving up but make sure you do your best at everything 